on the US oil we had the breakdown of the bullish trend line we identified on the on the four hours time frame and we had a retest of structure and I told you that there is a possibility that price could go down if we don't have a break above of that bullish trend line and during the New York session we saw our price came significantly down to eat a take profit at $113 with about 440 pips. I'm not sure if anyone took advantage of that move. If you had last week Friday, kudos to you and well done on that. As we saw price move over 400 pips to eat take profit target at $113. So now today, what are we going to do on the US oil? what is going to be our plans on the us oil well looking at what structure is given let's go to the daily time frame on the daily time frame we have this long-term bullish momentum that is highlighted with a bullish trend line you can see here after connecting the series of higher lows we can see our price has been respecting the bullish trend line since september last year so we had the breakdown of that trend line which appears to be like a false breakdown then as since price came back up into that trend line we saw the huge expansion that started in the month of in the beginning of the year and we saw price come back down respecting that bearish that bullish trend line multiple times between the month of March and last month now we have a scenario where price has broken down the, the temporary bullish trend line we identified on the hour time frame and it appears price is coming back into the trend line one more time. So at this point in time we don't know if price will come back to test the trend line and insinuate a trend continuation to the upside or there could be an outright breakdown of the trend line to send price crashing down. Now, um, if we look at the fundamentals on um, the whole commodity, we all understand that one of the reasons why we had this um, bullish momentum on the US oil on the oil since um, the later part of February is basically because of the the Russia Ukraine war, and we can see how Russia has been has been withdrawing its um, oil services to some of the European countries and um, during the later part of last week we saw the EU president saying the um, um, trying to solicit for oil from the Israelis and with this I am very sure with this new treaty between the European countries and the Israeli we'll be looking there is a possibility that this action could affect price on the US oil. However, we don't base our analysis on this as we want to look at what structure is giving us to determine how we are going to go in the new week. So right now on the daily time frame, we really don't have much to talk about here as we can see the bullish trend line. We're expecting price to come into that bullish trend line to push price for the hop or the possibility of price breaking down the trend line to push for price further down. So let's scale down to a much lower time frame where we want to look at what has been happening since the beginning of the week and we shall be using that to guide our actions going forward. So we want to delete this as this is no longer relevant at this point. We delete this and this and we have a scenario like this. So following the bearish impulse like we saw here during the later past of last week we saw price come back come down into 108 dollars and since that point we've been seeing a consolidation phase around this area and one thing i want to be looking out for is a breakout of this consolidation fit at either side to give us a signal of a trend continuation to the upside or we could be having a trend continuation to the downside and that's if we do have a breakdown of that bullish of that consolidation phase. 
So that is, um, those are the two scenarios I'm looking out for going into the new week. Now, to help us identify this, it's most appropriate we have key levels to guide our actions going forward. So if we look left, let me allow me to go down to the one hour time frame to see things more clearly. We have a scenario here that looks more like a demand zone at this point. Um, let's place it here. We have a demand zone around this area. And let's label it um, the demand zone. As we can see, as soon as price tested $108, we saw multiple rejections by the buyers from this area. So because of that, we will be naming this area our demand zone. So let's add this within here. Okay. Um, so we have our demand zone sit sitting around $108. And if we do have a breakdown of that demand zone, if we do have a breakdown of that demand zone, we want to be looking for a retest of structure to join a potential decline to the downside. So if a decline is going to happen to the downside, I'm looking at the bullish trend line to be rejected to push price further up. So if that scenario happens, hold on a second, let's have our entry level for selling opportunities right below here. And if we do have a breakdown retest of structure, we should be having our stop loss right above with around 60 pips with a take profit target sitting at $106 which will dovetail to a minimum a, a small 240 pips to catch and why is that that is because of the bullish trend line we have identified here on the daily time frame let's go back to the time frame so that we can see what i'm talking about so we have the bullish trend line we are hoping that the bullish trend line will be respected one more time However, if we do not have that kind of scenario happening, a breakout, we can see price started here during the week and price has been selling. As soon as price got into $111 areas, price participants sell. The sell as soon as price enters this region. So one thing I want to be looking out for to buy is if I do see a breakout, a significant breakout of that area, and price does a retest of this area, then I want to be looking for patterns on lower time frame that supports a trend continuation to the upside. And this trend continuation to the upside could be a could either be a retracement of this bearish impulse leg. It could be a retracement of this bearish impulse leg to send price crashing for the down, or it could be a move into the retest of the temporary bullish trend line we identified during the course of last week trading session that could send price going down. So for me on this one, if a bullish momentum happens on this pair, then it could at the meantime be a temporary momentum as we can see that we have structures supporting a trend continuation to the downside. So if price breaks out of the $111 area, we want to be having our entry right above this range where we'll be looking for confirmations in the form of a retest of structure on our lower time frame to join the potential to the upside. So personally, I want to be placing my take profit target at the previous area where price was at last week. And let's see what happens so let's give it at $117.50 so we have it around this area and that gives us about um, close to 65 66 pips then with our stop loss right below the previous structure uh, that's around 80 to 90 pips so what are we looking out for on this one we have two scenarios we on the US Hoyle the first scenario is we're looking out for a breakout of 100 and 
$11 area, a retest of structure, and look out for patterns on lower time frame that supports a trend continuation to the upside, then we could join the, the bullish momentum. However, if we do have a breakdown of the demand zone here, then a selling opportunity will come at a confirmation in the form of a retest of structure then we can join the decline to the downside. However, if the, if the bearish move breaks down that bullish trend line that we identified on the daily time frame, and definitely we want to be looking for a retest of structure of that trend line and pattern on lower time frame to join a trend continuation to the downside. So we already have two scenarios here on the US oil. I would advise that you screenshot my screen, probably do it recording of my of my screen to use as a reference when you are making your individual decision on this trade so i would like to pause at this point and let's give about um, 10 to 15 seconds to see if we have any questions or clarifications on what i have talked about so far Hello, hello, how are you? 773, good morning to you. Great. 783 says powerful, really? What's powerful? <laughs> 607, hi, good morning to you. How are you? Okay. Vasilija is saying to this sell. What are you selling, Vasilija? All right. Um, so in the absence of none, of no questions, I would want to move on to the UK oil. So on the UK oil, we have the same, we have a similar scenario with that which we had on the US oil. We had this bearish move to the downside from this trend line after the trend line was broken during the course of last week trading session we saw it broken we saw a retest twice before we saw the move to the downside and since price tested 111 dollars 50 cent area we saw we witnessed a consolidation phase in that area as this pronounces the indecision that has gripped the market at this point as participants are actually waiting for a catalyst to push price to either side, either up or down. However, it is pertinent that we take into cognizance that price is presently oscillating right above the bullish trend line we identified on the daily time frame. So first, firstly, I would like to go to the daily time frame so that we can see the bullish trend line we identified yes during the course of last week trading session so we had a bullish trend line run through like this and at this point in time there is a possibility that price could break down of the bullish trend line this week do a retest of structure then price could go crashing to the downside or probably to at least 99 dollars However, we cannot just make such decisions without taking for the um, for the structures into consideration. So now, if we look at what has been happening since the early part of April, we can see that the one hundred and fourteen 
$114 areas had been a major supply zone in the past. We can see any time price comes into that supply zone, we see um, a selling momentum to the downside. We can see a selling momentum to the downside from that area before we saw the breakout of that structure um, during the early, during the later part of last month. And then we saw something that looks like a double top structure and price comes back down to the supply zone and it has broken the supply zone for the down. So you will agree with me with what I just said so far that we are right at an area where the potential for selling opportunity is high. We are back into the previous supply zone. And if we see a rejection of this area, then definitely we might be seeing price crashing as we head into the new week. Now let's scale down to the lower time frame to see how we can take advantage of this move going forward. So right now on the one hour time frame, we need to first of all identify the demand zone just like we did on the US oil. So if we draw this, we can see that as soon as price comes into this area, we saw significant rejection by the buyers. And because of this, I want to be identifying this area as a buy opportunity area, which is more or less our demand zone. So let's label this for the sake of clarity. So this is labeled demand zone at this point. And one thing I want to be looking out for to sell this pair is that I want to see a breakdown retest of those demand zone. And the breakdown can act, might share a confluence with the bullish trend line, which after we see a breakdown, a retest of structure, and we look on lower time frame to look for patterns that support a trend continuation to the downside. So now, if that happens, we want to have our entry point right below the demand zone area that is after we found our reversal pattern on lower time frame then we might want to join the decline to the downside and if we have in our sell position like this then where will our stop loss be our stop loss depends on how structure plays out during the new york session it depends on how far the correction goes and it's most appropriate that we place our stop loss right above the previous high so for now i'm just speculating right now that like around 80 to 100 pips might be most appropriate but this actually depends on how significant that breakdown is as in if we do have that breakdown we want to be looking for retest of, retest of structure which we don't know right now where the retail structure is going to be it could be as far as this place if it could even be as low as this as this bullish trend line before we see patterns that support the trend continuation to the downside unfortunately i'm not going to be with you during the new york session to explain this to you but i'll just give you a clue into what our expectations should be as we head into the new york session so to make things simpler for us here i, I want to give you um, a key level to guide actions going forward. So with the key level sitting at one twenty one hundred and twelve dollars, let me see how far I can go on that. One hundred and twelve dollars. I think one hundred and twelve dollars would be most appropriate at this point. So let's place that one hundred and twelve dollars. We have a key level sitting at one hundred and twelve dollars, and we have our key level always painted in gold. So let's label this for the sake of clarity. Key level at $112. And let's place it on the right side of our screen. So we have something like this. So we have a key level at $112. Which shall guide our selling opportunity as we head into the New York session. So if we have a breakdown of this key level, it might share a confluence with the bearish bullish trend line. Then we look for retest of structure, pattern supporting a trend continuation. Then we could join the rally to the downside. So we should have our entry point right around this area. That's um, around um, $111.70 area. And this depends on how price plays out anyways. So one thing this key level does to us is this. It serves as our yardstick 
as we don't want to take any trade above the key level as we only want to take any selling opportunity right below the key level at $112. However, if at any point in time during the New York session or the later part of the week we see a breakout of $114, then definitely that could give us a sign that there might be a temporary bullish momentum that could go in form of the retracement of the previous impulse leg before we see on the move to the downside. Remember we had an impulse leg, we had, we had an impulse leg here during the course of last week trading session which shall also be a parameter that will guide our decision as we head into the new week. So if we do have a breakout of the $114 area, definitely if we do see a retest of that area with patterns on lower time frame that supports a trend continuation to the upside, we want to be taking advantage of a trade of a bullish potential right above the $114 area. So we have a key level for our bullish potential as well. That is, if we do have a breakout of the $114 area, a retail of that area should send price to the upside. So definitely we can be having an entry point right above $114 and that is only after the confirmation is done. So we have an entry point right above the key level and then I want to be having a take profit target right at um, at least the maximum of $118.50 that's around 450 pips that is if the buy momentum goes then we have our stop loss right below the previous low and which is exactly below the key level at $114. So this is my scenario here on the UK hall. Like I told you earlier, the first day of the week, we are not always sure of how price is going to play out. Sometimes there are fake moves just to just to shake um, people out of the market before price finally moves in a particular direction that it wants to go during the week. So because of this kind of this idea in mind. We want to be very very conscious as we want to play two scenarios and let's see which one works out for us and we can take advantage of that move and if we do have confirmations then we don't know things can happen in such a way that we have um, multiple entries along the line when um, we monitor as we monitor price action so um, for our selling opportunity we've not we've not yet um, decided where our take profit target will be. Um, for the selling opportunity, let's place our take profit target at 106 area. And the reason why that is, is because when I look left, I can see that we have a demand area around this place that could push price further up when price comes back into that area. So for the selling opportunity, we have like over 550 pips to catch. And for the buying opportunity, at the meantime, we have around 450 pips to catch as this buying opportunity could be a retracement of that previous impulse leg like i said so let's see how price plays out as we head into the new york session and be rest be ready and be cautious to take advantage of whatever move that happens please remember that after a signal is formed don't get too excited and join the train we want to wait for confirmations to see to be sure that price is moving in the direction the signal has projected. Like I used to say, it's better you don't take a trade and you don't lose money than take a trade and lose money. So patience is very, very key. So I don't know if there are questions or clarifications needed so far on what I've talked about. And if there is, kindly type it in the comment section and I'll look at it and throw, shed more light on heat.
Okay, so in the absence of none, let's move on to the next pair. So moving on, we have the GPP JPY. Um, for the GPP JPY, personally, I'm looking forward to a bullish potential. No, I'm looking for a bearish momentum for the Japanese yen as we head into the new week. After going through all the major pairs of the Japanese yen, I see tendencies that the Japanese yen might drop this week. But when it's going to start to drop is what we don't know yet as I'm still looking out for patterns that will support that trend that I am anticipating for the Japanese yen. Now, if we look at what is happening here on the GBP JPY, it is obvious that we are on a bullish trend. And if we look at, zoom into what has been happening since mid-May of this year, we can see our price has been trending to the house, to the upside and connecting the series of higher lows we could find a trend line a bullish trend line to work with as we head into the new week now we can see since the later part of may stroke the early early days of june we saw this bullish momentum which is which will now serve as our impulse leg as price tested 106 68.750 before we saw the retracement move into the buy opportunity zone that was identified here and we saw a reversal pattern that pushed price further up now with the reversal pattern identified at this point we all know that from a technical perspective a reversal pattern will always have a neckline as this neckline will be a platform where we'll be waiting for price to do a retest before we join the rally to the upside so if we look at this impulse leg that broke out of the neckline at 164 dollars we want to be waiting for price to come back into this area it could be the neckline area or it could be our golden zone area where we want to be looking for reversal patterns on lower time frame to join the trend continuation to the upside so my perspective on the GBP JPY is bullish and for the sake of clarity at this point, I would want to run my Fibonacci retracement tool and connect this impulse leg here where I want to be looking forward to my golden zone area which is between the 50 and the 78.6% of the previous impulse leg where I want to be looking forward to for buying opportunity. So if we have this like this, so a new buy opportunity area for this week should i'm projecting this area to be our new buy opportunity zone going into the new week so let me delete the bullish the let me delete this so we are looking forward to something like this where i look out for reversal patterns within this area to join the trend continuation to the upside so when that will happen we are not sure and um, we just need to be patient and conscious and be willing to monitor price action as it unfolds before our highs so i want to see a retest of either this area it could be the neckline if i see a reversal pattern sitting on the neckline on 164.164 japanese yen or on the bullish trend lines you can see the neckline and the bullish trend line share a confluence and if I see price reversal pattern right above that area I want to take a buy trade however if price breaks down the neckline and comes into our golden zone area which is between the 161.300 and 163.200 area I'll look out for reversal patterns on lower time frame let's say the one hour time frame where I will be looking to take advantage of a trend continuation to the upside so where will our take profit target be from the long-term perspective? Considering the, long, the impulse leg we identify here, we want to project this impulse leg into the future. And to be very specific on this one, we want to be using our Fibonacci extension tool 
and run it through that impulse leg and we aim at a 127.2% of that impulse leg which falls at around $172. So I'm just going to be using, okay, let's use $172. Yes, $172 most appropriate and that's around the 800 pips move. However, since we are just speculating on what's going to happen this week, uh, we are not sure that can happen this week. So we want to look at from a short term perspective what our expectations will be. If we look left, we can see that at this point in time, we had selling opportunities from this area as we saw this um, double top structure, a breakdown of the double top structure and a little bit retest of that area before price moved down. So this area at 167 appears to be uh, an area where selling potential could possibly come in. So if price could probably come into this area before we see a trend continuation to the downside, or if we do have a breakout of structure, a retest into this area could welcome um, another opportunity to add one more position to this trade. So because of this area at 167, we want to be using this area as our first take profit target and after if we see price break above that area we want to take advantage of a trend continuation to the upside so with this we have a minimum of about 300 pips to catch and let's see how price plays out as we head into the new week so our key level still sit at 162.5 anywhere below 162.500 is a no-no for buying opportunity as we want to see price continue to oscillate right above this area to be sure that we are going bullish on the GPP, JPY. So that is my perspective on the GPP, JPY as we head into the new week. And if we move on, let's move on to the next pair. Do I take another GPP, another Japanese yen pair? Because I'm seeing more bullish potential on this one too as well and i already had an entry here at 94.254 and why is that if we look at what has been happening since the early early days of this new month we saw we saw just like what we saw on the gpp jpy we saw this impulse leg after which we saw the retracement into our golden zone area which is within our buy opportunity zone and we can see that as soon as price tested 92.5 area we had multiple rejection of this area we saw the first rejection the second rejection and the third rejection giving us a clue into the buying potential that is around this area now with this reverse with this rejection of this 92.5 area multiple times i'm of the opinion that this is more or less like a reversal pattern you could call it a triple bottom structure but i'm just saying that a reversal pattern with a neckline sitting at 93.500 area which has already been broken out and retested as we can see here we saw the breakout the retest of this area and i'm hoping that price will continue to the upside from this juncture in the market now because of this i noticed here i placed the pending order right at 94 point sorry 94.2 is it 94.254 area and with the stop loss right below the key level at 93.5 we are expecting price to go further up our long-term t profit target is 99 japanese yen which is a, which will give us about 530 pips that if we extend the fibonacci if we use our fibonacci extension and run it through the the impulse leg we identified here and aim at a 127.2% of, of that leg, we have 99 area. However, I'm not sure that could happen this week. So for the meantime, I'm placing my tape profit target at this area, let's say 97 area. And why is that? If we look left, we can see that this area has at one time been a selling niche in the early days of the month where we saw the retracement phase happen. And so if we do that, we'll be aiming at about how many pips at least, at least a minimum of 250 pips for the week. And if we see a breakout of that structure, then definitely a retest into that area will welcome an opportunity to add more position to the trade. But pending the time that happens, let's place our take profit target at 97 
Japanese yen area, which of course is giving us around 250 pips to catch. So that is that on the AUD JPY. So moving on to the GBP card. On the GBP card, I'm expecting a selling opportunity here on the GBP card. And why is that so? Let's go to the daily time frame and let's see what's happening on the daily time frame. Here on the daily time frame, if we look at what has been happening since the beginning of March of this year, we can see our price has been respecting that bearish trend line. We can see any time price comes into that trend line, we see a rejection of that area. Hold on a second, please. Give me a moment, please. Um, give me a I'm sorry for the break in transmission. So like I was saying here, can you hear me? I'm sure you can hear me. Here on the daily time frame, we have a scenario where price has been bearish since the beginning of March. And now, because of the scenario here, I'm only thinking of taking a bearish opportunity on this pair. However, we cannot ignore the possibility that price could break out of that bearish trend line considering the bullish engulfing candle we saw during last week's trading session. So we can, it's possible we could see a breakout, a retest of structure to push price further up. Or we can see, we could expect price to respect this bearish trend line one more time to push price further down. So because of this bullish engulfing candles we saw here, this one, the first one here, and the second one here, we cannot ignore the possibility that price could break out of that bearish trend line. So let's scale down to the to let's say the two hours time frame. And let's see how price has been playing out since the beginning of the week. 
Now, if we look at what has happened here, after we saw this engulfing candle during the later part of last week trading session, we saw how price had rejected the 1.63 area multiple times. We saw here, we saw the move to the upside and we saw rejection here, one, two, three, four, and then we saw price move down into 1.59 area. Then price came back into close to 1.6 area and we saw multiple rejections of that area one more time. Now, giving us something that looks like a double top structure, that is, from a technical perspective, this is a very strong reversal pattern. And with the strong reversal pattern here, it is not yet confirmed until we see an outright breakdown of the neckline of that reversal pattern in the form of a breakdown of the 1.59 area. So for us to go, for us, for things to be more easier for us going into the New York session, I have identified a key level here at 1.5920, which is also falling around the neckline of the reversal pattern I showed you earlier. So one thing we want to be looking out for is this. We want to be looking out for a breakdown of that neckline that is want to see price break down of this neckline do a retest of the structure or probably reject the trend line one more time then we look down on lower time frame to look out for patterns that supports a trend continuation to the downside so in that regard i had a pending order here at 1.58952 which i am actually using to test waters as i still wait for the breakdown to happen and if the breakdown happens and I see a retest of the key level or the bullish or the bearish trend line, then I want to look for pattern. Then I want to add one more position if I see patterns that support a trend continuation to the downside. So from the long term perspective, where will our take profit target be? If we look at the previous impulse leg, which is here. And we extend it, we extend this leg into the future, we project it into the future, we will have something like this. And um, for the sake of clarity, let's use our Fibonacci extension to run it through the previous impulse leg, and we will be having something like this. Having at 127.2, we have our take profit target at 1.53 area, which dovetails to about close to 600 pips to catch on this one. This is a long-term perspective anyways. However, we're only looking for opportunities for this week. And one thing I want to be, I want us to see here is this. There is a structure that looks like an inverse head and shoulder pattern. You see, we have the left shoulder, we have the head shoulder, and then we have the right shoulder before we saw that breakout of structure. And there is an expectation that if this retracement continues the way it's going, price could retest back into the neckline of the inverse head and shoulder pattern before we see a trend continuation to the upside. So um, with this information in, in mind, I want to have my initial take profit target at around 1.575 or 1.574 area, which will dovetail to about how many pips that is? Dovetail to about 200 pips at least. And if we do have price breaking down of that neckline, then a retest of that structure should welcome an opportunity to add position to this trade. So in the meantime, we are aiming at 1.574 area as our initial take profit target considering the reversal pattern we identify here, coupled with the neckline of the reversal pattern. So we want to see if price is going to respect the neckline or break the neckline down. So this is my expectation here on the GPP card. The key level is here to guide our action. The bearish trend line is also there to guide our action as we head into the New York session. We don't want to see anything above the key level or above the bearish trend line. As anything above the bearish trend line is might be a potential to buy the GPP card. So going forward, if we want to sell the pair, we are looking forward to price to break down of the key level to sell the GBP against the Canadian dollar. So this is my view on the this is my view on the GBP card. And I think this will be the last pair I'm going to be taking today as I'm no longer time is no longer on our side. 
so um, in that regard I want to I want to give a review a recap of what we talked about so far so the first pair we discussed today was on the jeep on the US oil and on the US oil we had two scenarios to guide our actions going forward so the first thing I said here on the US on the US oil is this we had two scenarios we identified that um, we have this bearish trend line we have this bearish trend line sorry bearish impulse leg and since price tested 108 dollars area we saw price do a consolidation of this area giving us a clue into in the indecision in the market right now as participants are actually waiting for a catalyst to push price further up or further down so what i just said at this point is this if we do have a breakdown of this demand zone that is if we have a breakdown of this demand zone a retest into structure should give us a confirmation that price is going further down and if that happens we want to be looking for a reversal pattern on lower time frame let's say your 10 minutes to 15 minutes time frame to join the decline to the downside so i placed an entry point here at 108.40 where i said we could enter after the confirmation is done the second scenario i played here on the us oil is that if we do have a breakout of the structure here at 110 dollars then a retest of that structure with patterns on lower time frame that supports a trend continuation should welcome an opportunity to buy the us oil with a take profit again at $117.50 and the reason why I said this is this considering this bearish impulse leg here this move could be a retracement of that impulse leg that will send price going further down so this will definitely be a counter trend opportunity if we are taking this buying potential so to be on the safer side as price moves in our favor if we are taking the buying opportunity we are we, we have to move our stop loss accordingly to guide our position against any sudden bearish spike now we moved on to the uk oil where we have the same scenario here on the uk oil and on the uk oil we identified two key levels one at 112 dollars and the other one at 114 dollars what these two key levels are going to do for us is going to help us make things easier for us to take advantage of any potential that lines up for us going into the new york session so what does this do for any selling opportunity if we see price break down this demand zone which also shares a confluence with the bullish trend line we identified on the daily time frame we're going to be looking forward to a retest of structure it's going to be the retest of the key level it's going to go as far as that but we want to be selling right below the key level at 112 dollars Hence, I placed a pending order. I played a, a selling position at one hundred and eleven dollars seventy-five cents. That is, after confirmation is made, we could sell at this point with a take profit target at around one hundred and six dollars. And the reason why that is, if we look left, we can see that this area at one point in time has been a demand zone. So we want to, for the meantime take profit at around $106 with dovetails to about 550 pips then the second scenario we have here on the UK oil is if we do have a breakout of the key level at $114 and if we see a breakout significant breakout of that key level that is a close of candle above that area on the one hour time frame then we want to look forward to a retest of structure and look out for patterns on lower time frame that supports a trend continuation to the upside and if that happens we have our take profit again at $118.50 which dovetails to about $450 so this is my scenario here on the UK oil now we moved on to the GBP JPY white where I told you I'm expecting a bullish momentum however we are not yet to confirm where that bullish momentum is going to start from but from a technical perspective we have identified we have a bullish trend line to guide our action going forward we have a reversal pattern within this area which served as a first buying opportunity zone we saw here and then we saw a breakout of the neckline at 164 dollars then we are hoping that price will do a retest into the neckline 
where we'll be looking for a reversal pattern. It could be the neckline, it could be the bullish trend line, or it could go as far as entering our buy opportunity zone within the one to three point five area to take advantage of a trend continuation to the upside. So this is my scenario here on the GBP JPY with the take profit target for the meantime at $167, 167 Japanese yen with dovetails to about 350 pips to catch on this one. Then we moved on to the AUD JPY where we were talking about a bullish potential here as we have already seen a breakout of our key level at 93.5 area and price is oscillating right above our bullish trend line. So personally, I told you I had an entry point at 94.245 area where I'm aiming at to take profit again at 97 Japanese yen, which is to fill into about how many pips? 250 pips minimum on this one. So on this one, let's see how price plays out. And one more thing I want to say here on the AUD JPY is that there is a possibility that price could come back into the key level and then we can look out for reversal pattern like a double top, double bottom structure inverse head and shoulder pattern or whatever reversal pattern that comes along on the lower time frame that is your 10 15 5 minutes time frame then we can look for an opportunity to take advantage of a trend continuation to the upside so that is that on the AUD JPY then we moved on to the GBP card where I explained to you how I'm expecting a bearish momentum on the GBP card considering the uh, multiple rejection of the 1.6 area during the later part of last week trading session so the key level here at 1.5920 has been will be our yardstick going into the New York session. As we want to see price break down that key level, do a retest of that area to push price further down. So personally, I have a pending order sitting right at 1.58954, which I'm using to test waters. And after I see a breakdown of that area, then I'll look for a retest of structure to look for patterns on lower time frame then i would add one more position to this trade so let's see how this plays out as we go into the new york session so we are we discussed about four five pairs today and um, unfortunately i was not able to take euro usd as expected but um let's see tomorrow what will happen and um we shall be discussing how to go forward from whatever happened in the next 24 hours thank you for being around i'm really grateful and i'm excited to be with you guys so we look forward to tomorrow and i look forward to seeing you again tomorrow same time i wish you best of luck today and goodbye